Welcome to Specific Love. Here recently we've had a large influx of new DIYers coming into the community. So I wanted to get back to the basics and help them get their projects done safer and easier. With that said, let's talk about the random orbital sander. Now when I'm referring to the random orbital sander, this is the one with the round sanding pad, not the square pad. I actually believe that this tool has a lot more advantages, especially for beginners. Now let's talk about some of the features of this type of sander. Now on the bottom of your sander you have a sanding pad and that's where you attach your sanding paper. Now, if you just heard there, it sounds a lot like Velcro, and that's because it's very similar. This is referred to as a hook and loop system that you attach your paper with. Now, always remember when you're attaching your paper that the holes that are in your paper need to line up with the holes in the bottom of your pad to get the most appropriate dust collection. Now these sanders come in a corded and a cordless version. If you're gonna be sanding all day long, then the corded version is probably for you because you don't have to worry about a battery dying. But if you're gonna be taking it out and about like I do, then a cordless version will probably work best for you. Now usually on the top of your sanders, you're gonna have an on off switch. This right here is just one button. This actually has a toggle switch. It goes back and forth. Some of the models you'll have a speed option that'll make it go faster or slower. This one has it, this one does not. And then all of your sanders should come with a bag to help collect the dust. Now here are a bunch of tips to make this sander work the best for you. Now even though these sanders usually come with a dust bag, in most cases you'll find that they don't do a very good job collecting all of that dust. In fact, there's a very good chance you're gonna have a haze of dust just floating around you. So I would strongly recommend getting a dust mask anytime you're gonna be using one of these sanders. Now anytime you're about to start sanding on a project, you always wanna make sure that you start the sander touching your actual piece. If you don't do that and you start it up in the air, there's a good chance that your sander is gonna start spinning and getting really fast. And if you were to set it down on your project, there's a good chance you're not gonna set it down perfectly flat. And in those cases, you're gonna create some nice grooves and deep scratches in your project that are gonna to have to be taken out later. So make sure you set your sander down on your project, start it, and then start moving it around. Now whenever you're sanding, especially if you're up close and over it, there's a tendency you might put extra weight on your sander trying to get it done faster. I highly do not recommend that for a couple reasons. One, it's gonna add extra resistance and extra heat to your paper, therefore potentially melting that hook and loop system, which is just plastic. Therefore making you have to replace the very least the bottom pad, if not the entire unit. And two, that's gonna prematurely wear out your motor. Back when I first started, I had an orbital, random orbital sander, and I did just that. Added a ton of weight to it, and shortly thereafter, I noticed it started smoking, and it literally wore out the motor. I didn't understand until later that by adding that weight, it's just adding too much pressure and will easily break it. Whenever you're sanding, you may have to grab your sander really hard to keep control of it, but just allow the natural weight of your arm and hand to assist. Don't add that extra weight. Now if you still find yourself putting a lot of weight on top of the sander, I suggest changing your grip to a side grip here. This will allow you to keep full control of the sander, but less likely to put weight on it. Also the advantage of the side grip is you're less likely to tilt it over back and forth like you would if you're holding it on the top. Now one of the first things a person usually notices about a random orbital sander when they go to use it for the first time is the vibration. Yes, these transfer a lot of vibration into your hand and arm. So if you're gonna be using one of these for a long period of time, I suggest grabbing a nice thick set of gloves and that should help minimize some of that transfer. Now just be prepared, if you're gonna be using one of these for a long period of time, say almost a full day of sanding, there's a good chance your hand is gonna tingle afterwards. Now if dealing with all that vibration is just not an option for you, then you need to look at the higher brand sanders. For example, Festool or Merca. Now these tools are many times more expensive than your just standard random orbital sander, so be prepared for that, but you can get the job done with very, very minimal vibration. Now always remember the quality of your sanding paper will definitely help in the process of sanding down your project. So whenever you're getting sanding paper, make sure to get the better quality versions. Now there are a bunch of studies that have been done on this, a lot more detail than I could ever get into on the sanding paper, but just remember, better quality equals a better finish and it can last longer, and therefore you can get multiple sandings out of one pad. A lot of times when we're working on a project, we might try and sand it really fast. Well, that's not gonna get a real good finish. Actually, if you take it in a real slow, consistent motion on your project, you're gonna turn out to have a lot better finish in your sanding. 
Whenever you're sanding, it's very important to know the grit of your sandpaper. And usually, in most cases, you'll find it right on the back. For example, this right here is 120. Now keep in mind that the smaller the number, the more gritty it's going to be. In other words, it's going to make deeper scratches. And the higher the number, the finer it's going to be, therefore making a nicer finish. When you first start sanding a project, especially if it is a rough project, I strongly recommend working with a grittier sandpaper first. Remember, that's the lower number. And then once you've fully gone over it with that and knocked off most of those rough surfaces and most of the scratches that are currently in your project, then progress up to the, say, a 120 grit, and then you can go up to 180 or 220. If you don't step up like that and get each one, there's a very good chance, say, like you start at 120, then you're going to sit there for a long period of time with that 120 grit trying to get rid of those scratches and deep grooves that the 60 grit would have taken care of very quickly. So remember, step up in the paper, otherwise you're going to be spending a lot more time and money because you're just wasting your paper. Sometimes when you're sanding across the surface, especially if you're new, it's hard to tell if you've sanded evenly across the whole thing. Here's a little tip to help. Take a pencil and you want to make some marks across the surface of your project. Just like so. And once you take your sander and you start going back and forth, as soon as all the pencil marks are removed, you'll know you've sanded evenly across that entire surface. Now if you're planning to add some kind of stain or a finish to your wood, it's a good idea not to go above 180 or maybe 220 on the grid of your sandpaper. Because you want to leave that grain a little bit open so it's more accepting to that stain or finish. Now once you've been using your sander for a while, the pads, at least in my case, don't always wear evenly. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. If you notice on this one, all the edges seem to be tattered, but the sandpaper in the middle is still really good. So when I remove these pads, I don't throw them away. I actually purchased this little hand sander that uses the same sanding pads with the little hook and loop system. And that way you can put them on here and you can do a bunch of hand sanding with your pads and you can utilize a lot more of that paper surface. Now anytime you're working on a project that's supposed to have nice clean sharp edges over the sides, be very careful when you're sanding on it. If you go very far off the edge, your sander might tip a little bit and therefore it will just round over these edges. In those cases, just try and sand up to the edge and be very limited about exactly how far you go off. This is especially true going around these little corner edges. You can easily round off one of these edges and it just will not look right. Now whenever you need to sand the inside of a corner and you use your sander to get right up in there, there's a very good chance that the edge of your sandpaper and your sander is going to come in contact with the vertical side of your project. In those cases, you're going to create some nice grooves and scratches in that vertical piece, thus creating either more work for you or maybe even just destroying the project. Now whenever you have to do that, get you some thin cardboard, maybe like a cereal box or a snack box, and you want to tear it off nice and straight so that it can now sit in that corner. Attach it to your project and you can use your sander to get right up in that corner and you don't have to be worried about scratching those vertical pieces. Now whenever you're using your sander, you need to remember that dust is the enemy. If you can't get that dust removed from your paper and your project, then you're basically just gonna be moving it around and being very inefficient. So in most cases, see if you can hook up a vacuum or maybe some kind of dust collection system. On some of them, you'll have small little ports like this right here, and you'll have to buy little adapters. These are inexpensive, and you can hook up just a basic vacuum. In some cases, like this one right here, it's actually a very large piece, and I can hook up my hose to my dust collection system. In any case, use whatever works for you and get rid of that dust. Now whenever you're doing your sander, you got to realize that sometimes these sanders will leave little swirl marks in the surface of your wood. These sanders will do at least 95% of your sanding, but in some cases you may have to go back with a hand sander, remember the little foam sander I showed you earlier, and go back and make sure you go in the direction of the grain, and that'll help you smooth out any of those swirl marks. So just always keep that in mind. Now, by chance you have a sander with an adjustable speed, I'd recommend keeping it about middle of the way. And that should work for most of your projects. And if by chance you have one that needs a faster or slower speed, then adjust it and move it back to the middle when you're done. Now, some people might think if you turn it up all the way up, it'll get the project done faster. And in some cases, that might be true. But also remember, that's gonna wear out your sander much, much faster, and you're gonna have to go buy a new one pretty soon. So keep it about middle of the way. Now, as I mentioned earlier, dust is the enemy to your sander and sanding on your wood. 
Now, if by chance your sander builds up a lot of dust on your pad, instead of having to take it off and shake it off a lot, I'd probably suggest picking up one of these little cleaning sticks. This right here, it's a rubberized compound that you'll turn your sander on and you'll just run this back and forth across the paper. And that'll help remove a bunch of the dust build up, thus extending the life of your sanding pad and hopefully getting the most from it. Now whenever we're going to store our sander, it's a good idea to keep a sanding pad on the bottom of it because we're trying to protect all these little hooks and loops that hold each of the sanding pads. Now if we didn't have one on the bottom and we set it on a surface that's not perfectly flat, it'll slowly start to deform each one of these, thus making it a lot harder to attach your sanding pads and just use it in the future. So anytime you're going to store it, keep a pad on the bottom. Now a bunch of these are great tips, but always remember number one, which is to have a dust mask. It is essential when using a sander. It's also a good idea to wear some eye protection and some ear protection as well. Now if by chance you can think of any other tips, please put those in the comments below. We want to help out as many people as possible. Now I'm going to have a playlist right over here, a bunch of other tools and tips for those. So make sure you check that out. Otherwise, get out in your shop and have fun building. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> now even though most dust, it's not a dust collector, it's a sander. I have a chance, a chance, what is this?